Right guys, back with another video. So today I will be doing a short overview and temperature testing on the brand new Noctua uh, NTH2 uh, thermal paste which was released recently. Uh, I read some short uh, articles about it and I also watched the uh, review video of it by etechnics.com and it got me a little bit interested uh, in the thermal paste as the original uh, NTH1 was very, uh, very well performing both on air or water cooling and even on sub-zero uh, cooling methods. Some uh, Polish guys got really good uh, temperature delta results with the original NTH1 on LM2 so I decided to give the NTH2 a go so uh, I decided to order it uh, online so this is not a sponsored video by Noctua I have bought this tube myself so uh, the Noctua NTH2 comes in two different sizes it comes in a 3.5 gram sized tube and also in a 10 gram uh, size tube. The pricing is actually quite high. It is significantly more expensive than the original NTH1, which is obviously uh, a minus. Uh, the thermal paste wasn't really available in Finland. I could only find it in one or two stores. So, so uh, the price uh, in Finland for the Noctua NTH2 was 13.9 euros for the smaller 3.5 gram size tube. The 10 gram size tube, which this one is here, uh, was 31.18 euros uh, cheapest uh, or the cheapest price for the 10 gram size tube. So it is definitely an expensive uh, thermal paste. It is more expensive than the uh, thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, for example, which costs around 24 euros for the 11.11 .11 gram size uh, tube. And it is also more expensive than the uh, Kimping Cooling KPX 30 gram sized uh, jar. So uh, the uh, price wasn't so, uh, uh, or it, the price didn't look so kind, but I still wanted to give uh, the thermal paste a go as the original NTH1 was quite good. So uh, it comes in a quite large packaging. So I'm not really a fan of this kind of uh, box because this doesn't fit inside an envelope. So this is fairly expensive to ship. The uh, price I paid, I ordered this uh, online from uh, Austrian uh, eBay site. I paid 24.9 euros uh, for this uh, the 10 gram size tube and uh, also 3.9 euros of shipping. So the total price was 28.8 euros. And then the gram price, when you include the shipping, was 2.8 euros per gram it is an okay price but it's definitely not cheap so uh, that is a minus so they claim that this has some uh, clear improvements over the NTH1 we will see that out we will be testing this thermal paste against the Kimping cooling KPX again on 9900k CPU on the EVGA Z390 dark uh, there's nothing that important on the back there is actually no uh, uh, thermal conductivity rating at all on this thermal paste uh, at the back side of the packaging so uh, uh, they say that recommended storage time is uh, up to three years and uh, recommended uh, usage, usage time is up to five years so they say that this is a very long life or long living thermal paste so uh, one application should last up to five years we will see that out operating temperature ranges from minus 50 degrees to 200 degrees so uh, I think this is, a, this is a good thermal paste also on LM2 but I have not tested it myself and uh, not really any other person uh, in the community so we will see that out. Uh, 10 uh, cleaning wipes included so let's open the package and see what's inside the box. So yeah it, it, is, a fairly it, it is a fairly large tube as normally the uh, uh, thermal paste tubes are up to uh, like 3.5 grams uh, maximum so uh, what's inside the packaging is only uh, this small box here the uh, thermal paste itself and also some uh, uh, application guides and also all the uh, cleaning wipes yeah they definitely include many of these uh, not sure if it's fully needed as I use normal uh, windshield a windshield uh, cleaning al alcohol myself so uh, yeah they have different uh, 
guides for different sized uh, CPUs so uh, for small mainstream CPUs they recommend uh, one small dot in the middle and uh, larger CPUs like Ryzen or Intel X299 five dots and uh, then uh, Threadripper or the uh, or the uh, 28 core Xeon, like multiple uh, dots all over the IHS, but we will be spreading the thermal paste with a plastic applicator, like I did with the, uh, like I did in the uh, thermal paste comparison video where I compared GC Extreme, uh, Cryonaut, and KPX against each other. So uh, yeah, there is no uh, applicator, there is no applicator included actually. So. Uh, I have to use one of my own so uh, yeah this is how the thermal paste looks like so it's just a brown tube but without further ado let's uh, start applying this thermal paste so we will be applying the thermal paste exactly the same way as in my uh, high-end thermal paste comparison videos we will just apply a small amount of it at a, uh, in the middle of the uh, uh, heat spreader and then we will spread it manually with a plastic uh, applicator so nothing really uh, special about it so we can be sure that the whole IHS is covered as I already demonstrated uh, previously that using only a small dot in the middle might not cover the IHS uh, uh, totally So that's how it looks like. So some of you commented that I use too much thermal paste. It doesn't really, uh, it doesn't really matter, as all the excess will be pushed uh, away from the CPU to the sides anyway. So uh, you only need a very thin layer. Yeah. So uh, that's how it looks like. There's, you can't really say that that is too much thermal paste. So the whole IHS is covered. So now we can start testing the uh, actual uh, temperatures. We will be testing the Noctua NTH2 thermal paste uh, with the 9900K CPU again and the Z390 Dark uh, by running the Prime 95 26.6 test uh, in small FT mode for roughly 30 minutes uh, with a CPU speed of 5.2 GHz and 4.5 on the cache and 4200 4, MHz on the memory with 17, 18, 18, 28 common rate 2 timings so we are using my 5.2 GHz Samsung V-Dive daily profile which is available in the bars. Uh, since that we are using my engineering sample CPU this time we will be running the core speed uh, slightly lower than what I ran in the uh, previous thermal paste comparison video where I used the uh, golden retail CPU that got many uh, overclocking records back in early December. So. Uh, we are using a set V core value of 1.35 volts with a load line calibration setting of minus 50 percent so uh, it is significantly higher than with the retail CPU uh, last time uh, we will be comparing the maximum core temperatures measured by core temp to the ambient room, te ambient room temperature which we are measuring with a K-type uh, thermocouple probe which is attached to, the, to this huge uh, radiator over here so uh, we will just compare the uh, delta temperatures against each other and see which one is doing better the NTH2 or the uh, Kimping Cooling KPX just like last last time so uh, we can just start the test and we can already see that the uh, core temperatures are jumping from high 70s to uh, mid 80s so the core temperature varies from 73 degrees to 84 degrees so the second core is for some reason uh, cooler than the rest of the other cores so uh, the uh, range is quite big around 10 degrees so we will just let the uh, test run like this with all cores and uh, threads and uh, see how it looks like after 30 minutes and then we will just change to uh, KPX and then we will get on a conclusion. So on to the results. So uh, the NTH2 seems pretty good overall. It is very easy to spread and when you look at the uh, overall cooler contact after amounting the cooler uh, it looks pretty good. 
when uh, looking at how well the uh, thermal paste has spread. So I ran the NTH2 twice in Pran95 for 30 minutes so I could be totally sure that there's no stupid mistake or similar during my testing. Then I used the uh, results of the better run and compared them against the uh, KPX. So uh, the overall results for the NTH2 were that the average value of the core maximums measured by core temp was 85.5 degrees. So it is significantly higher than uh, during my previous thermal paste comparison test video because now we are using much higher V core because we have a worse CPU. Uh, the delta temperature to the ambient room temperature was 60.4 degrees for the NTH2. Then when I, then when I run the uh, Kimpin cooling KPX, the average value of the core maximums for the KPX was 84 degrees. So that is 1.5 degrees lower than the NTH2. And the delta temperature to the ambient room temperature uh, was 58.8 degrees for the KPX. So, so the overall performance difference uh, was 1.6 degrees better uh, for the Kimping cooling KPX. So uh, the two thermal pastes are pretty much within the margin of error. The overall difference is very uh, uh, minimal. So the NTH2 is definitely performing great. So uh, what should I say about the thermal paste? The, maybe the only sad part about the NTH2 right now is the price and the availability. When I look at the prices uh, in Europe, for example, I can find the 10 gram size tube of NTH1 for less than 15 euros. And the uh, 3.5 gram size tube is like 8 euros or even under. So uh, the NTH2 is almost twice uh, the price of NTH1, like 80% more expensive. So if they can get, if Noctua can get the price of NTH2 uh, down a little bit, then the thermal paste is definitely a great option. Uh, I don't know how I don't know how eTechnics uh, got so big difference uh, in their testing video. Maybe when they since they use only a single dot in the middle of the IHS, maybe they have some margin of error in their application method. But when I test. Uh, thermal pastes myself on top of the IHS, the overall temperature differences are always very minimal. When I tested the OEM uh, included thermal paste against high, a high-end option like the KPX, the overall, the overall temperature difference was only 6 degrees or so. So uh, well, if I have to make some sort of a conclusion about thermal pastes, it doesn't really matter uh, that much if you are just building a stock configuration system that which thermal paste you use if you just use somewhat a uh, good option out on the market. Of course when you are overclocking then you should always aim for the best possible uh, solution on the market. If you are for example building a really expensive uh, custom uh, water cooling loop then you have to aim for the best possible thermal paste on the market like KPX, Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, Geely C6 Extreme or the NTH2. So, I really like Noctua products overall. I think their air coolers are amazing, their fans are amazing. If they can get the price of the NTH2 down a little bit, like more closer to the NTH1, then this is definitely a great option. But right now, in Finland for example, I can find the uh, 11 gram sized tube of Cryonaut cheaper than the NTH2. So, uh, I don't really know why I would pick uh, this over crying out right now but if Noctua can get this uh, for less than 20 euros for example then this is definitely a great option so I really was interested about this thermal paste when I saw the video of eTechnics.com as in their testing the overall temperature difference was like 9 degrees or so that is a huge difference uh, between two thermal pastes as well they can't really improve the NTH1 that much because the NTH1 was already performing quite well. So uh, yeah, the NTH2 is great, but its price and availability, availability isn't so great at the moment. So yeah, it is definitely worth uh, considering. So uh, uh, if you like this video, if you have some comments or questions about my uh, testing methodology, then please leave a comment down below, subscribe to my channel and uh, 
give a thumbs up and maybe share this video and uh, thanks for watching and see you next time